What's up? My name is Blue Boy. Welcome back to the channel, and uh, gonna try a new format. The old format I absolutely despise, so try something new. If you like this, like it, I guess. But let's just call this week Xenos Week, because today we're talking about orcs. Now, I have a video back in the day that I made about orcs, but that's more of the general faction lore and the actual characters. This one's gonna be about something different the clans. And essentially, they're just sub factions. But these clans are really fun and real goofy and proper exemplify why orcs are so fun to look into. So if you're on the fence about getting into orcs, like hopefully maybe one of these clans really tips you over that edge because they're a real fun army to collect. But real quick, let me just describe to you what an orc clan actually is. So an orc clan isn't like a big sub faction in the same way that say Space Marine Chapter is or that kind of deal, like general sub-factions, it's not exactly that. It's more of a culture, and a culture where you can actually have a mix of other orc clans in one big tribe or warband. You could have, say, a bunch of evil sons being led by a goth war boss with a large contingent of blood axes all in the same wa. Totally fine, it's totally normal. As well, these clans are actually more of a genetic difference rather than something you can just pick and choose. You're kind of born into your clan. Though you can leave, but we'll, we'll get to that one later. Now, I'm gonna approach this in alphabetical order. So first up, we got the Bad Moons. Now, these guys are essentially the merchant class of orcs, as they are the richest orcs, they got the shiniest stuff, the best food, and the most teeth, which is the orc currency. It's teeth, largely orc teeth. And the Bad Moons actually have a slight advantage, kinda as they actually grow their teeth a lot faster than most orcs, leading to them having more money. However, other orcs know this isn't really an advantage because if you want extra money, you just gotta club a bad moon over the head and boom, you're done. That's extra payday. But bad moons love to show off, love the biggest, shiniest, boomiest things possible, and this is perfectly shown with their one of their unique units being the flash git. The flash git is a bunch of orcs who are obsessed with having the loudest, boomiest gun possible. They're equipped with augmentic eyes called git finders, and they go to a mech boy and ask for the best gun that Teeth can buy, and they receive a snaz gun, which is a snazzy gun. And you can augment it in any which way you want. Do you want it to shoot more? Add some more magazines, some belt feeding equipment, some scopes, shoots more. Make the barrel a bit bigger and the bullets bigger, it does more damage. Or you can even make it like an energy explosive weapon. It's just as dangerous for the orc shooting it as it is to the enemies, but it does more boom. And next up, we got the Blood Axes, which are the least trustworthy orc clan in the eyes of all the other orcs, mainly because they keep dealing with humans. And as such, they actually built up some of the human strategies and tactics, much to every other orc's dismay. Things like camouflage and ambush tactics, which it's orc camouflage, so it works just as well as you'd expect. And they also like looting vehicles. If you see any of those cool models people make of like looted Bane blades or land raiders, all that stuff, that's largely a blood axe thing. And then also they do the most reprehensible tactic to other orcs they retreat when they're losing. That, and also, sometimes they'll act as mercenaries, where humans can hire them on, and they'll go fight in return for, like, some scrap, some new weapons, and stuff like that. I'm surprised it's not a more common orc thing, to be completely honest. I mean, you get paid to fight. But pretty done deal, but most orcs are too insular and hate every other race in the galaxy because orcs are the best. And for their unique unit, we got the Commandos, which the best way to picture this is just like Green Rambo or a bunch of orc catachins, as they strictly do that big knife, hide in the bushes actually pretty well, and they absolutely delight at causing horror and fear in the eyes of their enemy when they pop up, slit some throats, and cause a massive mayhem. They're big fans of that because orcs take a lot of pleasure at the violence they do. Which also, fun fact here, these commandos actually value intelligence and intelligent thought, and some of them can even read. Nuts, a smart orc is insane. Then next up we got the Death Skulls, which are a bunch of thieving gits in their yet another clan the other orcs just don't like, mainly because they're a bunch of looters and like battlefield vultures. As they're fighting, they kind of just start stealing everything that isn't nailed down and some things that are. And as well, they're also super superstitious, so they paint everything blue, 
the lucky color, which their unique unit actually exemplifies this, this being the Luda Boy. These are the ones who actually go throughout a battlefield and just pick up random shit and put it in their pocket. That's their deal. And I pictured exactly like this uh, scene from The Naked Gun. Which actually, fun fact about these guys, they're actually pretty chill with having their stuff be stolen. Uh, the way they see it, proper orc culture is should be shared, and everyone should really share all their stuff. In reality, this means if you're not looking at it, I'll take it, and it's mine now. But if you steal their stuff, they're not upset about it, because yeah, you earned it. I wasn't paying attention, and you grabbed my shit. Good on ya. So, good on the orcs for being one of the only Warhammer factions that I think is morally consistent? Uh... I don't know how to feel about that. Then next up, we got the Evil Sons. These are the speed freak orcs that everyone learns of the second you start learning about orcs. The first thing everything gushes about with orcs is how important colors are because they believe painting things different color changes aspects, which the Evil Sons do that. And they have, you know, the I think the most widely known one as red makes things go faster and the Evil Sons really like going fast. So shit is just painted red. And they're the envy of all the other orc clans because they can get to battle first when they're involved in a WA. And they paint all their trucks, all their bikes, all red, and fling it downfield as fast as possible. And for unique orc units, just look at any vehicle and just picture it going faster. That's kind of their thing. But one thing I will mention, they have two really interesting subcultures inside of their culture. Now, yeah, I know subcultures are a thing. Uh, they're just insular parts of an existing culture, kind of. So I'll just get into it. Uh, one of them is the Cult of Speed, which is kind of what it says on the tin. They just like going as fast as possible, and it's an actual obsession with them. And that's their personality. Then the next one are the Flyboys. Now, orcs prefer to be on the ground. I think it's something to do with them being fungus and growing from the ground, but the Flyboys are a bit weird in the eyes of the other orcs, mainly because they like flying. They get a special sense of euphoria as they're flying through the air, just doing wild maneuvers, spinning around. They're massive fans of it. To the other orcs, it's a bit strange, but they can reach new heights and new speeds while flying. And of course, we got the Goths, the ultramarines of the orcs, because they're one of the biggest clans, they have the most characters, and they get up to a lot of shit because the current biggest and baddest orc war boss is Gazgul, who's a goth. These guys are essentially just brutal melee hordes. They're your textbook, charge in with a big, like, choppa screaming, that's a goth. And as well, a lot of times the orc mob is actually so big that most of the ones in the mob can't actually see or know what they're fighting because they just assume all these other orcs are screaming, running in this direction. There's probably some good shit to fight down there. And that's really all they want. If you promise a goth that you will give him a good fight, he will follow you to that fight and serve you. And then for unique units, we got two really interesting ones. First one's a little more basic. It's the goth guard which I think you can just kind of indicate as like, they're orc terminators. They're heavily armored, scary warriors that are the personal bodyguards of Gazgul himself. And that's a pretty notable position to be placed in. And yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. Then the next one is a kind of a goofy one. We have Donuttas, which is an incredibly short living group of flyboys that have a special move called the flying headbutt maneuver, where they get so fired up in their fighting while in their plane, they want to headbutt the enemy. While inside of a plane. Yeah, they're short-lived because they keep crashing into knights. Then we got the snake bite orcs. These are a bunch of tribal primitive orcs that shun all this fancy tech because it's not proper orky. They prefer to be more in line with tradition, with more simplistic tech. They still have some, but not a lot. Instead of trucks and bikes, they use squigs or boars. In fact, that's where we get the beast nagas, which while being a subculture, the actual beast nagas aren't just a unit, it's a full on subculture. They are also following that same line of shunning away complex tech and going with the older orc culture before they started actually creating all this shit. That and they actually spend most of their time fighting really big scary shit. So they're naturally a lot stronger and tougher than your normal orc something that they will always tell other orcs if they have the chance. And also, I will mention again, these orcs will actually travel with other warbands, with other clans. They personally shun the use of tech, but they're not against like someone else using it. They're just gonna be scoffing at you 
as you like whiz past on your bike because they think you're lame. Then finally, let's talk about a clan that isn't even a clan at all. We're gonna talk about the Free Buddhas. The Free Buddhas are made up of a bunch of orcs that either leave their clan willingly or are forced and exiled out of it. So it's essentially a giant group of anarchist orc exiles that decide to become pirates. They also act as mercenaries in a lot of aspects and they roam around trying to find good loot and kill some fools because that's all orcs want to do. And even in design, they're pirates. And even with like peg legs and eye patches because that's more of a reason because a lot of pain boys don't really defect a lot. So they kind of have to make do with the injuries they get, which means, yeah, just cut off a leg, put a piece of wood in there, give an eye patch, done deal. Meanwhile, the captain is just the biggest and toughest orc in that group, and as such, he gets to denote his class by wearing a big hat and a big coat. That big coat is used to uh, actually hide a bunch of weapons and fungus rum because they're still pirates at the end of the day. So yeah, that's about it. Uh, trying this out instead because I, I can't edit the normal 40k slideshow anymore. It's mind numbing and I really don't like making it. So I'm cutting it in the middle making this. Hopefully soon I'll return back to my normal format, but if you like this, like, comment, subscribe, do that stuff, join my membership, and uh, see ya.